It all starts to make sense With all these omens who've been calling it in uh -huh. It all starts to make sense Welcome to the Writer's Dojo here in Portland, Oregon. I'm Rachel falk -Saline. And today we're going to be talking with Mike Dooley, author and speaker. His latest book, Infinite Possibilities, The Art of Living Your Dreams, recently came out and has recently hit the New York Times bestseller list. So we're thrilled to have Mike. I'm How thrilled to be here. <laughs> How are you doing? Thanks, Rachel. You did not set out to be a writer. And now you're mm -hmm. sitting here with a New York Times bestseller. And you talk a lot in your book, uh, which I think is brilliant, about this, the cursed house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about that for you? How I mean, it seems sure. like there's a connection there. Well, the house, uh, I call them the cursed house because, you know, we've been trained in our primitive society, spiritually speaking, to figure out the house. You know, otherwise we're reckless and irresponsible, uh, um, you know, and, and living in a fantasy world. But the fact of the matter is when it comes to having a dream and wanting it to come true, the last thing you should ever think about, certainly not worry about, is how it's going to come true. We do live in a magical place. It's very much like the dreams we have at night. And we invoke certain principles when we have a dream that we visualize and that we physically move towards. And one of the worst things that we can do if we want to see this dream come true is to then begin insisting on how it comes true. Uh, for instance, uh, I was at a crossroads in my life about eight or nine years ago. I had just decided with my brother and mother who were my business partners to liquidate our t-shirt business. We'd done really well for 10 years, we made a lot of money, but the trends were declining. A couple of years trying to, to stem the tide didn't work and we were at a place where we had the luxury of liquidating our inventory and just moving on. And so during which I, we could each coast a couple of years without having to worry about um, making ends meet. So that's when I really embraced the kind of things that I teach. And my end results, because I really talk about the starting point for creating change is defining the end, where you're going to be as opposed to how you're going to get there. And uh, I discovered something that I, I have taught ever since and teach even more now during my third world tour, and that is let your end results or your dreams be general, which seems to contradict everything. Uh, including the secret and I'm one who does advocate visualize the details get into the details the details add power and excitement to your vision but yet the the nuance here is that you don't attach to those details and often those details are how we think our dreams gonna come true mm -hmm. my end results uh, eight or nine years ago when I was at this crossroads really feeling like I had to reinvent my entire life were Creative, fulfilling work, which I had no idea what that would be. Uh, international travel, it's a passion of mine. But it's also general. I didn't say Paris next uh, April 4th or something. Um, wealth and abundance. There's enough for all of us. Uh, friends and laughter. And really, those four dreams were what got me going and uh, have remained unchanged in my life to this day. And I did not say, I'm going to be a writer. I did not say, I'm going to be a speaker. It terrified me, the idea of speaking in public. I did not insist on any of the details, though I visualized the possibility that, well, I might write a bestseller. Or, uh, I might, I might uh, become a landscaper, another passion. I might uh, Trouble this year, or it might be five years, but I would visualize being overseas to places I wanted to go without um, attaching to hows or specifics. Rather, using these possible avenues as, as ideas that could empower me and get me excited about the ultimate end result. Because in the end, we don't care how we're creatively fulfilled if we're going to be creatively fulfilled. We don't care how we surrounded ourselves in wealth and abundance with, you know, some, um, <laughs> some conditions, of course. And, and that's fine to have conditions. You know, I want to do it ethically and morally and don't want to, you know, I don't want to succeed at the expense of someone else. I mean, those generally go without saying. Um, they did for me back then. But by leaving the house to life's magic, uh, we, don't, we don't close any doors. We don't tie the hands of the universe, who I say conspires on our behalf, uh, which is just my metaphor for our greater self, the universe. And uh, we keep all possibilities open. You know, it, in a car, you use your GPS. You, you give it 
the end result first, mm -hmm. which is the same in life. Start with the end result. You don't know how you're going to get there. That's why you've got this gizmo. And we don't know how we're going to make our dreams come true because there's so much more to who we are uh, in the unseen, uh, being spiritual beings, that uh, we can't know exactly how our dreams are going to come true. But it starts with the end result. Then you put your car in gear and you take action. If you were to say, you know, I must get there by driving down Rodeo Drive or A1A or I must do this, you eliminate, excuse me, all of the other possibilities of how you could have gotten there. And, and generally, there's roads that none of us know about. And in life, that's most certainly true. There's skills and gifts that we all have that have been untapped so far. Yet if we insist on how, we eliminate those possibilities. And for me, um, critical in making a dream come true after having the end result is putting your car in gear and taking action. So, so take little baby steps in directions that resonate with you. Writing was one of those. Not to be a writer, but to, to make myself, place myself in a position where I could be a writer, because that might be it. What else might it be? It might be speaking. It might be an online a web company, you know, all three of which I, I do now, but not insisting on any. And this way, you know, you're open to new ideas, you're open to inspiration, which is never accidental. We summon the inspiration we need to achieve the dreams we have when we have an end result and we take action. And, you, and so this is how I ended up becoming a writer, kind of by default, not even enjoying really the, the written word. As a, as a reader, but, but seeing it as a possibility. So I gave that to Life's Mechanics as like, here's something that might work, you know, mm -hmm. see, what, see what happens there. Where were you when you heard that your book became a New York Times bestseller? What were you doing? Uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, oh, this is a fun, glamorous answer, great question for me to uh, boast and gloat a little. <laughs> but I was uh, flying from Orlando to London, where I was going to be speaking to a couple hundred people in a day-long workshop subsequent to which I was flying to the Mediterranean for a Mediterranean cruise with a group of people that uh, I'd be traveling with. And uh, it was changing planes in, uh, I think it was uh, the New Jersey airport. Newark? Newark. Mm -hmm. And uh, literally walking off the plane, checking my voice messages on my Blackberry and Cindy from Beyond Word Publishing. My publisher uh, had left a message with the great news and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is you know, there's the realization, uh, the coin drops that, you know, for the rest of my life I'll be a New York Times best-selling author. And it was just, it was really, really overwhelming. Uh, when big dreams come true, they're always better than you even imagined that they could be. Uh, and so the ramifications are bouncing all around in my head and, uh, and you know, the credibility it adds to you as a, a writer or a teacher is uh, immense. And um, and fortunately, I had a couple of hours in the, the lounge, the Delta Lounge or Crown Room or whatever it was. So I was able to make some phone calls and post something on Facebook and like, woohoo, <laughs> dreams come true. That's awesome. It all starts to make sense With all these omens who've been calling it in uh -huh. It all starts to make sense